Hello everyone, my name is Danny and I'm reviewing Goodbye Christopher Robin. Just sounds like a sad title. This is a 2017 movie rated PG. It runs 107 minutes. And... I guess that's all you need to know. This beautifully filmed, poignant story directed by Simon Curtis from a screenplay by Frank Cottrell Boyce and Simon Vaughan gives a rare glimpse into the relationship between beloved children's author A. A. Milne and his son Christopher Robin at the end of the First World War. Milne is inspired by his son's toys to create the magical world of Winnie the Pooh, which brings him immediate and enduring celebrity. But the book's international success comes at a cost to the author, his young son and his wife Daphne, in this compelling film about fame and family that also stars Kelly MacDonald. A. A. Milne is played by Domnall Gleeson. The young boy is Will Tis Tilston. And Daphne is Margot Robbie. <sighs> it's nice to have a true story that isn't about a war. You know? It's nice to have a true story about something nice. Um, I enjoyed The Blind Side. I enjoyed other movies that are true stories that are nice. But I didn't see this one coming. And then all of a sudden it showed up on a, a list of mine that I should check it out. And it was from last year. And I don't know if anybody's heard of this movie. I saw it at Walmart. But it didn't look like it had many copies sold. So... I hope y'all are putting this on your list. I, I hope you hear about it. I hope you give it a shot. I hope you make time for it. It's a very nice movie. And it's something that needs to be watched by people. I don't think it's getting on many people's radar. Uh, the first thing that you notice within the first five minutes or so is how great the transitions are. Just from a movie standpoint. It has um, him, the the father... It tells the story about how he was in a war, and then it has him like break through this wall area out in the battlefield, and all of a sudden he's in a ballroom, and it goes to the next scene where he's kind of meeting the girl that he's going to marry and everything. It's really cool stuff. Um, I haven't seen it too many times, and a lot of people don't take advantage of that kind of move on to the next scene, kind of transition kind of stuff, but it's very smart and well done movie making and I appreciated that very much um, the message about this movie if, for anybody who is not sure about watching this it's a people movie it tells the true story of the family in you know people version it never really shows a cartoon and everything in it kind of hints at you know you thinking that they're going to just start showing cartoons and all this stuff. But it's not about that. It's about the very subcontext of the family and what happens, you know, in their real life and their struggle with the fame and fortune of that time. Um, just, you know, dealing with how to handle it and how to grow up for the little guy and how to learn how to be parents for the parents and, there's so many factors to it. It's just an intriguing subplot it's after subplot after subplot. And uh, the main you know, message of it is to learn how to be happy when everything is so bad. And I really think this is kind of ringing true for nowadays. You know, we're all just kind of wondering what in the world is going to happen. You know, I mean, there's so much to worry about. There's so much to stress about. There's so much to... Um, you know, protest, 
you know, and uh, argue about. And this is a really great movie for now. People nowadays, I don't know what we're going to get to, you know, circle up on together uh, so that we can all ride the wagon of happiness nowadays. But they were dealing with that in this time period of this movie. And they found their way through. And Winnie the Pooh was a real big part of that. So I think it's a great message for today. And I I hope that, you know, I'm, I don't know what one person can do. And I'm not a big political person, but I think we all need to kind of work on that nowadays about trying to find something to agree on that might bring us some happiness in this dark time. Uh, I have two negatives. And uh, the first one is about how bad the parents are. Um, they're rich and well off of that time, whatever 1930s well off was supposed to be. And, uh, it's very obvious and it's very obvious that they're higher class and it kind of sucks that this Milne had to go serve in the war, but he does come out of it and, uh, it doesn't get explained if he married into wellness or if he kind of came from wellness himself. But it's very obvious that they are upper class. So the fact that their son needs a nanny is fine. I understand that. I saw that coming a mile away. I, I knew that was needed. But everything that happens saying that they can't interact with him or because they have a nanny, they can go do whatever they want. Um, the times that they tell the boy to be quiet because the dad's working. Um, just there's like a hundred different examples and it just paints them out to be the worst parents in the world and it doesn't make the movie very fun and so the middle hour of this movie kind of drags and it's kind of hard to get through and it's kind of like mud because every time you see the parents being awful awful characters human beings having terrible lines talking to each other like stiffs, like robots. There's a line in this saying that um, the little boy is coming down the stairs crying because of the nanny having to go away for a little while. And the mom says, you know we don't allow blubbering in this house. I'm like, what? <laughs> you don't allow your children to cry? Really? I, I was just wondering. It's just lines like that that just made it kind of hard to watch and it was just kind of dragging. And I didn't know if we needed it that real. It, it, I mean, I understand that I appreciate it was real and authentic, you know, stuff. And it's probably how they talked back then and everything. But I don't know if I really needed it that real. And it could have showed some compassion. The father does good about showing human emotion and compassion for his son. And understanding sometimes when he gets told what's what. You know, to be a better father and care about his son. And um, it happens two or three times, which I don't know why it has to happen two or three times. If you get told you're an awful father once, don't you kind of snap out of it a little bit? But uh, he does good about actually trying to be a good father. The mother's just awful. I mean, I don't know if it's her character or her as a human being or just the lines that were given, but it's just awful. They seem like the world's worst parents ever. Um, so the other part of this is that what kind of started this all for me was at the beginning of the movie when she's giving birth. Um, it, she has trouble and then I guess they're like not happy that they got a boy and then it goes from there and it kind of comes back to it once or twice about the fact that she had a troublesome pregnancy. Um, we're supposed to start off feeling sorry for her, Daphne. And I just never do. I never feel sorry for her. I, she ends up being this complete and utter terrible mother that I just cannot ever feel sorry for. Her. And I know that this movie is trying to paint it out to be like that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's how it's supposed to be. It's fine, but... Um, 
the last movie I saw is All I See Is You. And I, you guys can go check out that review for me. You'll understand what I'm talking about here. But the last couple movies I've seen here, two in a row, the women characters are meant to be weak. They're meant to be troublesome. They're supposed to be having this hardship laid upon them. And they just end up being hell to be with, hell to deal with, and hell to talk to. And they end up taking advantage of people. They end up taking advantage of the situation. It's like, who is writing these movies? But I'm watching them all at the same time. And it kind of sucks that, uh, you know, are women like this in the world? I mean... If somebody doesn't have a job, they just take advantage of their family and take advantage of their friends and never give them the time of day, the people who actually care for them and actually are helping them out and everything. Is that how normal people are? Because it's how every movie woman is turning out to be. I just think it's terrible. I'm not having fun watching it. You know, these women characters that are just conniving are just ruthless. So... That's all my really talking about this. Um, and, uh, like I said at the beginning of this, it's a really nice movie, really nice story. I don't know if people actually know this came out, so please give it a try. I'm going to give it a B plus. It's right on the borderline of becoming an A. It's just that mother just ruins it for me. And then the parents just being stiff. And it, I know it's of the time, but for a movie, it just doesn't work for me. So B plus, very enjoyable, very nice. Uh, it, you know, if you watch this with maybe some teenagers, they might understand the whole Winnie the Pooh world and might get every reference made and everything is just delightful as it comes along. So give uh, Goodbye Christopher Robin a try and that's it for me. My name's Danny. If you like this or any of my other reviews, please like and subscribe to my channel and enjoy your movies. Thanks a lot, guys.